Hi there, and welcome to Mr. Carlson's lab. In this episode, I'm going to take a small Tektronix oscilloscope and do a battery upgrade. So basically, what I'm going to do is get rid of the long since dead lead acid battery and replace it with something a little bit more modern. And by doing this, I'll get a little bit more operating time out of the oscilloscope as well. So let's get started. So here's how the story goes. I'm browsing around online and I run across this Tech 224 oscilloscope. I'm not thinking too much of it at the time, right? It's a cute little old digital oscilloscope really is what it is. And, you know, I've seen the 222 before and yeah, you know, I'm thinking, you know, it's, uh, you know, these scopes are long in the tooth, but you know, they are kind of cute, right? So I thought, well, you know, I, I spotted this thing and I'm like, you know, what's that? So I, I go back and I take a look at it. Oh, it's a, a two bay battery charger. You can, you know, fit the factory lead acid batteries in here and plug them in. And so I he had some high res photos. So I, I clicked on the high res photos and I look at the bag. And I go, wow, that's almost you know, absolutely mint. You had the little scope out of the bag at the time and the scope looks absolutely flawless. And, you know, I see the manual and the power pack. And you had the probe sitting beside it and everything. And I'm thinking, wow, this is sure clean. I, I'm just going to call this guy. The price was right, you know, as uh, basically giving this thing away, right? So I call the fellow up and he says, yeah, I, I bought this for an intended purpose. And I think I used it five times, he said. And uh, it just really sat. And he says, I'd like to see it go to a good home. He says, it's, uh, you know, it's pretty much collector's condition. And I said, well, from the pictures, I can definitely see that. I said, would you mind if I come and take a look at the thing? He said, sure. So I go and meet the fella. And uh, in person, you know, it looked better than in the photos. I'm looking at this and the bag is just flawless. Everything is just, looks like it came right out of the box. And we'll take a look at the scope here in just a minute. The probes are in the little side bag with the scope. And we'll take a look at that all here. So, you know, the, as I say, the price was right. And I said, well, I, I can't leave this behind. This is so cute. Well, of course... You know, one hitch with buying a scope like this, both the lead acid batteries are now unobtainium and they're unavailable. Now, using something like this is, you know, if you want to really start looking at high frequencies, this is a DC to 60 megahertz oscilloscope here. All right. But, you know, you start getting into the HF area and it's, you know, into the higher frequencies and it starts to play connect the dots. Right. It's, you know, it's a slow digital oscilloscope. So, you know, for in the field for just random stuff, it's kind of cool to have around and, um, you know, it is a little bit of a conversation piece and, um, you know, the scope itself looks really, really good. So I picked the thing up and I figured, well, I'll try and retrofit some batteries into this thing and um, make it come back to life again. It runs on the power pack alone, but uh, it would be nice to actually have it portable. So what I'll do is in the next shot here, I'll open up the bag and get all this stuff out of the way here and we'll take a look at the actual little oscilloscope. So in order to get the scope out of this neat little carrying bag here, it's pretty simple. Just press this little button and it's right there. They left a nice little hole in the top here so you can get to this keypad. And you know, if you want to use the scope itself, it just comes right out of the bag like that. And that's the little oscilloscope. So it has a little stand here. You can pull a little stand out if you want to use this thing on the bench. You know, you can just use it like so with a little power pack on the back. You can see how small this thing is. It really is pretty teeny. And of course, I'm a sucker for any small oscilloscope with a CRT in it. So the probes are in this bag here. You just unzip this bag and there's two probes. Now the probes have got a really interesting connector. They're not like a standard BNC style connector. So one would have to create an adapter if you wanted to run a different, you know, probe on here, but I'm not too worried about it because both of these things are just absolutely in pristine condition. As he said, he's used them about five times. You can see that there's just absolutely no time on these probes. Usually you find, you know, finger goo and stuff on these probes and they're discolored, right? It's got that kind of a beige color to it and they're just absolutely spotless. So the probes are in there and the battery is right behind this here and it's really easy to get at. So what I'll do is I'll just zip this little case up here. And in order to get at the battery, you just slide this back. So basically you go click like that and this comes out and there's the lead acid battery inside. It just makes connection to this connector here. The battery just comes out like so. And uh, you can just pull the connector off nice and easy and you have the batteries out. So this here is the little compartment that I'm going to fit the new batteries into. And you can also see here, if I grab that, uh, that charger, I just moved that out of the way. I'll grab that. You can see how that would, you know, just pop right into this charger, charging bay like that. And then you just plug 
the battery itself right into this here and then I imagine you could probably use the stock charger on this. I don't know if there was another you know, power pack that this thing had that it didn't come with but I'm really not too concerned about it because when I put the batteries in here it's you know I'm not, I'm not going to worry about this thing. This is more just it's part of the collection really at this point. So these are little lead acid batteries and uh, of course you know definitely not available anymore. So in just a moment here, we'll take a little closer look at this lead acid battery and I'll show you how I'm going to replace this with something a little bit more modern and uh, a battery that has a little bit more capacity as well. We'll put one together is what we're going to do. So this is the factory battery that these Tektronics oscilloscopes come with. And really what this thing is, is it's two small lead acid batteries that they've glued together in the center here with hot glue. Now, if you remember from my past Tech Tips Tuesday episodes, I tell you how to release the hot glue from pretty much anything, and I'll just fill you in briefly again. All you do is you use rubbing alcohol, the 99% stuff, and you know basically put it on the glue. Of course, you gotta be leery of the surface that you're putting alcohol on, right? But in this case, I used the rubbing alcohol right on the surface here, and you just move the hot glue around. And in fact, what I did is I pulled a little chunk of it away because there's a gap between the batteries. And I put some right in there and just kind of sloshed it around a little bit and the stuff just pulls right off. And you can separate these two batteries. And there's also some neat information hiding underneath this Tektronics little badge here. So after you get the glue off and you peel the sticker off, this is really what's underneath it. So there's two Panasonic 4 volt 2.1 amp hour batteries or I don't know in today's speak at 2100 milliamp hours. That seems to be how they like to word everything now. And when these things are together, they're you know, like this in the package, okay? And they're glued together, but I've just turned them around like this. This is the top of, of both batteries here. And what they do is they have both of these batteries in series. So you get 8 volts at 2.1 amp hours out of these two little lead acid batteries here. Now, of course, I want to replace these things. I don't want to use a lead acid battery in here for, you know, many reasons. You know, if these things ever started to leak, it would completely destroy that little oscilloscope, right? And I want something that has a little bit more capacity. So these two batteries here, you know, the connections are relatively simple. The two red wires on the connector here are just connected together here. All right. So they're just, they run up here and then they're parallel together at the connection here. And then the, the black wire has got this, uh, there's, it looks to be either an inductor or a small resistor in here. I'll have to open this up. I'm, I'm curious to see what's in here, but they're, you know, you know that they're using this as a fuse. Basically that's all that's going to be. All right, many companies do that. They use small inductors as fuses, very cheap fusing, all right? So, again, I want to replace this thing. So I figure, you know, what can I do this with and, you know, and, and get a little bit more capacity out of it. So what I did is I picked a bunch of these up right here and, uh, and some more of these things and, you know, some more of these things. And uh, I came up with uh, all of this. So basically what these are is these are uh, 2,500 milliamp hour, or if you want to look at it in, you know, 2.5 amp hours, okay, uh, uh, batteries here. So if I put two of these in parallel like this, and two of these in parallel, and two of these in parallel, and two of these in parallel, and all the way along, all right, so I'm just joining these together, and then I hook these all in series, I'll get around nine or over nine volts a little bit when fully charged out of all of these things. And I'm gonna have five amp hour capacity out of this thing. So I'm figuring this has gotta be pretty good. You know, there's no acid to leak out of these things. They'll fit in there. Now, these are, you know, of course, they're rechargeable nickel metal hydride batteries. And yeah, they're pricey. In fact, the price of all of these batteries is almost more than I paid for the entire oscilloscope. But hey, the scope's cool. And uh, it would be nice to have the thing running and be able to use it, you know, in a portable situation. So these batteries will last a very, very long time. These newer nickel metal hydride batteries, they discharge very, very slowly. They all, you know, inherently, I guess you could say they kind of bleed their own charge off after a while, but these are really good batteries. These things, they, they last a long, long time and they hold a charge for a very, very long time. In fact, these things came pre-charged in the package and I just topped them up in the charger before I'm gonna actually put all these things together. So they're all completely, they're fully charged right now and uh, ready for me to join together. And then of course, when I put them in the scope, it, it should work pretty much right away. 
So what I'm going to do is start connecting these batteries together and next I'll show you exactly how I'm going to do that. The first thing I'm going to do is put these batteries together. Basically, I just want to stick these things together and that makes it easier for me to work on these things. A very easy way to do that is use super glue. You got to be really quick with this because when you touch these things together and there's super glue on them, that's it. They are together. So you want a flat surface and you want to make sure that you know, you're not going to glue them together like this. You want to make sure that you, you come in true so that they're matched at the top and at the bottom. So what I do is I, I take my super glue and I just put a strip of it down the side here like this. Okay. Now I have to be really, really quick when I'm doing this and I want to make sure that I come in absolutely straight and want the tops to be identical. There they are. Now once you touch them together, that's it. That's all you got. They're together. They're solid. If I was to try and pull these things apart right now, it would pull the actual the shell off the battery. So these things are just, they're locked together at that point. So what I'm going to do is do all seven of these like this. I've done one other one like this already. And I'll get these all put together. Now, when I'm putting these things in series, I don't want to have these things touching each other because they're gonna be at a different potential. So I'll use an insulator between all of these, but I'll get into that here in just a little bit. So what I'll do is I'll continue to glue all these together and I'll be back. In my next step, I've put insulating barriers between each of these sets of batteries. Now, I understand that each battery itself has its own insulative coating on it. If I was to glue these two together, technically I'd have two insulative coatings glued together. But if they were to split or something like that down the road, there would be a chance that this body would touch this body of this battery here and I'd have a short circuit condition. So by having these little insulative cards between each of the pairs of batteries, it's just a little bit of added protection. Now you can see this is a solid glued block. It's very, very solid. This would never come apart. In an extreme situation, if I needed to, you know, say break a a pair of these off or split the pack. I could do that by sticking a screwdriver in here, but it would, you know, it's still extremely solid. It's going to hold itself together quite nicely. This big old dusty dirty transformer I've got here just to act as a square. It's got some weight to it. And what I've done is I've, if you just picture these two batteries on the end here, they're all glued together in pairs, right? So if you just picture these two batteries here, what I would do is I would take them and push them up against this. Now these little insulative cards are the exact length of the shell of the battery, excluding the cap here, okay? Because I need to jump wires across, so I don't want them sticking way up. So what I would do is I put the battery up against here and hold it up against here, drop one of those cards down in there, and then get the second set of batteries and align the bodies up, get them nice and square, put some super glue on it, and hold it for just a moment, and they're bonded just that fast. Then I would take you know, the next set and work my way up like this. And then once you get enough batteries on here, you can actually use it as a square this way as well. Now, again, you gotta be very quick if you're gluing these things together with these insulative cards between here, you gotta be you know, very fast because the minute you touch them together, they're bonded. So there really is no room for error there. But it's a nice solid battery pack. You can see it's nice and square each way and uh, it's ready to be joined together. And that's what I'll do in the next shot. In the upcoming segments of this video, I'm going to be joining these batteries together in series parallel, and I'm going to be doing that by soldering these batteries together. Now, yes, a lot of people frown on soldering batteries, and yes, you can frown on soldering batteries together if you don't know how to do it correctly, but I've never had an issue myself. If you are uncomfortable with soldering batteries together, I strongly suggest that you don't do this. If you're following along in this video, you're doing so at your own risk. So just take care. So I'll briefly go over the technique of soldering batteries together. It works really quite well and I've never had an issue to this day and I've been doing this for years and years and years. So there's a whole bunch of things that are involved in doing this and you need a really high heat gun and I'll be showing you that here in just a moment. I have another video where I explain soldering batteries really quite in depth and I'll just link that below the show more tab. So just below this video, you'll see a little show more tab. If you click on that, I'll start that video off right at that point. In fact, it's to do with another Tektronix oscilloscope as well. So what I'm going to do is get all the tools ready here and I'll show you exactly how I'm going to join these things together. 
Before I go about trying to apply any solder to these batteries, I definitely want to rough up the surfaces here just a little bit with some sandpaper. So I'm going to have to do that to each battery here and the caps of these batteries as well. So I'm going to be roughing up all of these surfaces here. So once I've got that all done, I'll be back with the soldering iron. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to solder a bridge across these two batteries here and have it ready to go to the next set there. All right, now I've left this straight and I'll explain that here in just a little bit. Now I've got some RA type flux here and that's going to help this solder quite a bit faster. This rag here is soaked with water and it's nice and cold. And what I'm going to do is basically flash this with solder here very quickly. All right, and then once that's done, I'm going to take this and touch this on here and cool that battery off extremely fast. All right, so what I'm going to do here is I'm first going to put just a little bit of solder on there. I'll cool it off and then I'll tack it again just so I can hold this on here like this. And that'll allow me to work around in kind of a, a half circle here. All right, so this is the gun I'm using. All right, it's a uh, 200-260 watt D550 iron with a piece of number 10 wire in the tip and I explain that in another video. I can also link this tip video in down below as well. That'll also be below the show more tab here. So the whole idea is to keep this quick and that's what I'm going to do. So here I go. See how fast that took solder? And that's just cold to the touch. I can put my finger on it. Now, I can see this being a lot easier on the battery than spot welding, I would think. All right, that's just, it's dead cold. My finger is sticking into the, uh, into the RA type flux there. So that has flowed out quite nicely there. All right. So now what I'm going to do is steady my hand here Try and line this up the best that I can and I'm going to come in here and touch this again. Now the heat itself is actually right on the wire. There it is. Nice and solid. And dead cold. Well, I would say it's just lightly lukewarm at this point here. All right. So now that I've got this wire on here at this point, it's holding it kind of steady for me to do the rest of my work. So basically, I'm going to cut this off up here like so. All right. Now, you can see that there's a gap between this battery and this battery here. I'm going to put a little insulator on just between that there. So I'll just grab some of my insulating pipe here. all sorts of different sizes and this one looks like it'll work just fine so basically what I'm going to do is just measure that up cut a little piece of this off all right slide it down here like so all right and basically what this is going to do is just stop this from trying to touch this battery here and that's the only reason I have this between okay so now that that's on like that and I have it all sized up. I can put another little drop of RA flux here. And I can come in with my iron really quick and solder this up. And it takes just like that. And as you can see, not even lukewarm at this point. So it works quite well. And it's the same with these. You have to be very careful with the caps on the tops of the battery here. So now that I have this measured up like this, I can get a pair of pliers. All right. And I can kind of align this to the center of the cap here. Okay. So what I'm going to do is take a pair of pliers Come in here and just bend this like this so I have a nice square bend. 
All right, and now that I know what my lengths are going to be, I can just cut this off and use this for something else, probably on the other side. All right, now I want a bit of attention. This is kind of springing up. In order to put a little bit of tension between this, all you have to do is just hold this down and bend that up just a little bit. And now there's tension on this on the caps of the batteries there. So what I'm going to do is take a little bit of RA flux on there. Now this side here is a little bit more sensitive than doing the back side of the battery here because you don't want to melt that plastic there. So I've got to be really quick with this. And as you can see, it works out quite well. Now you can see the plastic is pulled away just a little bit from that, but that's absolutely fine. There's no issues with that whatsoever. You can see the little vents in there are actually a little bit nicer this way. You gotta be very careful that you don't flow this down around the sides and actually plug those little vents. That's very important. So the next one will be this one here and I'll just go along. So once I've done this here, then I've gotta join these ones, all right. And you know, it just kind of works its way along here, right? So from here to here, right? You know, and all the way along, I have to have these all in series parallel. So I got a bit of a, a job ahead of me and to sit here and watch me do this could be quite tedious. So I'll just get this all done and I'll show you exactly what it looks like in the end. The battery pack is now soldered together in series parallel. You can see how I have these little insulating pieces of pipe here on the wire just between the batteries just in case it ever got pressed down it wouldn't short the two batteries out and that's on both sides here see here here and here as well so from this end here this is negative here and this is positive here let's take a look at the voltmeter and see what we've got all right so here we go Negative here and positive here. So 9.59 volts, so 9.6 volts. That's looking really, really good. So the next thing to do is to attach that little wiring harness so I can put the power from the batteries into the scope. Just before I go soldering this wiring harness onto the battery pack here, we wanted to see what was hiding under that little piece of heat shrink tubing. And it turns out that it is an inductor. So this is a 2.2 microhenry inductor. And now that I have the heat shrink removed here, this negative lead is just a hair too short. So I need it to be about, oh, just a few centimeters longer. So what I'll do is I'll use this as an opportunity to change out this piece of wire and put another piece of heat shrink tubing on here. I'll attach this to the battery pack and then we'll try it out. Here's a quick look at the battery pack with the wiring harness on it just before I cover this all up. So the negative lead is attached here and you can see I have a piece of this protective pipe over the wire because the wire is going to run across the batteries like this. Now this pipe here is extremely high heat pipe. This is the kind of stuff that you find in toasters. So it's kind of a fibrous pipe. So that protects the wire as it runs across the batteries here and on the top I've attached the two positive leads right here on this battery. These are connected together. It's just that there's not enough room to really attach both leads. So I just split one off to this battery and one off to this battery. And they're joined by that little jumper in the center there. So now I'm just going to cover this thing up and we'll try it out. Okay, here's the finished product. It's all wrapped. Worked out quite nicely. Nice solid build. So this is ready to go into the oscilloscope now. The new battery pack is installed and as you can see it's quite a bit smaller than the lead acid battery. There's still some room in here. So I've cut some foam blocks and these foam blocks just tuck in here like this and just wedge the battery tight. There's another little foam block right up here just so that this doesn't move around and transport. On the battery door I put two pieces of weather stripping. It's got an adhesive on one side and that way when I put this on like this it just gently presses up against the battery and snap this forward and it's nice and solid so that battery won't move around in there. So next we'll take a look at the scope screen and see how it functions. 
All right, let's see if the scope runs on battery power. Now I don't have any probes hooked up to this thing right now just because I really don't plan on taking any measurements with it. For those of you that are interested, the probes plug in at the back side of the scope here and they go right through the battery door. So if you want to get the battery door off, you have to pull the probe leads out. You see the little probe lead jacks in there. Now a lot of people just leave the side of the bag kind of hanging open like this and then have the probe leads coming out. What I like to do is tuck the leads down here and then zip this little bag right up and then have the leads just exit out down here and then run along the bottom side of the oscilloscope. That's nice and clean and you don't have to have this little bag hanging open. Another nice thing about this little bag is it fits the probe leads quite nicely. You don't have to wrap them up super tight or anything. They just kind of gently fit in there. So this case is uh, well designed. I like that. A lot of the newer cases, you got to wrap everything so incredibly tight and tuck it in a certain way and, and then it's hard to get the zipper shut. This is uh, really quite comfortable. So I'll just shut some lights off here and we'll turn the scope on and get rid of the glare off the screen there. There we go. And no problems. It's working great. So the little box tells me what channel I'm on. So this side here is channel one. So if I move the position, this trace on the top here will move up and down. And if I hit channel two, you'll see that little box will go over here. Now that means that if I adjust the same control, this lower trace will move up and down. It really is quite a user-friendly oscilloscope and it you know works very, very well. Again, it's a DC to 60 megahertz oscilloscope. It is an early digital type oscilloscope, so once you get into the higher megahertz, it you know again it does play connect the dots. But you know if you're using this thing at you know around 30, 40 megahertz, it's absolutely fine. You know uh, up around 60, you got to be a little bit patient. But um, you know if you're using this for troubleshooting audio or looking for noise or anything, it's absolutely great. And what's not to love? It's got a CRT. Thanks for stopping by the lab today. Hope you enjoyed this episode involving this small Tektronix oscilloscope. If you did, you can let me know by giving me a big thumbs up and hang around. There'll be many more episodes just like this in the very near future, touching on all sorts of different aspects in electronics, vacuum tube and solid state stuff. So until next time, take care. Bye for now.